you so much. Good morning. So happy to see all of you here. I'm Megan Kelly, and we begin today unbelievable, unbelievable. Did you see what happened yesterday in the sentencing of Dr. Larry Nasser? Yes. That man is going to prison for the rest of his life. He's the former team USA Gymnastics physician, and I use that term in quotes. A man one prosecutor described as possibly the most prolific serial child sex abuser in history. Yesterday, he was sentenced to 40 to 175 years in prison for molesting young girls, typically under the guise of medical treatment. Over seven days, gosh, this is extraordinary, 156 women, 156 victims, survivors, most of whom began this process anonymously but then eventually went public, came forward to face their abuser in court during sentencing. As one of them put it, an army of survivors, Jane Doe's no more. Watch. That I will not rest until every last trace of your influence on this sport has been destroyed like the cancer it is. That day I lost a large piece of myself and my sanity. Not only has this sexual abuse taken away my ability to be myself, but it has also caused extreme physical and emotional pain. I am 100% confident that if he had not been caught, he would continue to do this for the rest of his life. You actually are not a real doctor. You're a serial child molester, a pedophile. There is no therapy, no cure, and no healing for monsters like you. You are pure evil. The road to healing looks steep from where I'm standing now, but I am a warrior. Little girls don't stay little forever. They grow into strong women that return to destroy your world. Wow. During sentencing, Judge Rosemary Aquilina read a letter from Nasser out loud and made clear her own disgust. She responded to his, you should have heard it, uh, protestations by saying this. You do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. And he won't. Just last night, the president of Michigan State University, Luanna Simon, resigned from her post under pressure. In 2014, she said she received a report of Larry Nasser being cleared by the university for a sexual assault claim, but said she did not receive the full case file. Joining me now are three of the extraordinary women who helped bring Larry Nasser to justice. Please welcome Rachel Den Hollander, Maddie Larson, and Kyle Stevens. Thank you. Uh, uh, What an extraordinary thing to see all of you get up with your real names and say what he did and how it affected your lives. Let me start with you, Rachel. Um, you were the first woman to come forward publicly. Yes. Ver very first woman. Uh, the, the assistant attorney general said this about Rachel. There was no doubt in my mind she would carry this case, that the world would hear her and believe her. When you first came forward, you were alone. The only victim whose face and name was out there. What was your reaction when you saw the parade of women raising their hands and saying, me too. Oh, I cried, yeah, and for two reasons. Yeah, the first is that to see all of these women able to come forward and, and to speak the truth about the abuse that happened to them and, and to be able to put the shame and the blame back where it belongs on their abuser is an incredibly powerful thing to witness. But it was also a very devastating thing to witness because the vast majority of the women in that courtroom, myself included, came after the first reports of sexual assault to MSU. And so when you witness that level of damage and you know that it did not have to happen, that is heartbreaking reality. Just so the audience understands, because this, this man abused in multiple places. So one was USA Gymnastics. Correct. One was Michigan State University. Then there were private incidents of abuse. He was at different gymnastics training facilities. Twistar, is that the one? Twistars. Twistar, and uh, also Bella Caroli's uh, facility as well. Fa very famous, the Carolis, you know them. Um, so the, he, was, he was everywhere. And that explains in part how many victims there were who came forward. You're a mother of three yourself. He yes. started with you when you were 15 years old. Um, Talk about that victim impact sp statement you made where you asked repeatedly, how much is a little girl worth? Yeah, 
I think that's the question that we all have to answer. How much is a little girl worth? Is it worth losing, uh, you know, going against maybe your political party, your church, your religious organization, your community, uh, the sport that you love? Is it worth giving up those identities to save a little girl? Which one is worth more? Because the reason that predators like Nasser are able to abuse for so long is because the instant community response around the predator uh, is to circle the wagons and to support him. And usually that's because there's some sort of overarching ideal or identity that is trying to be protected, whether that's university identity, a religious identity, a political identity. Uh, and we have to find, we have to get to the place that children are worth more than those identities, than those overarching ideologies. The other people, yes. The other piece of it in his case, and a piece that bears mentioning is he, he was clever. He was extremely good at manipulation and grooming and projected warmth and a soft place to fall. And so the community thought of him as this dear, beloved man. And it's a, it's a red light warning to others that somebody maybe in your community who looks just like that and acts just like that, and we see it so often in child molesters, uh, that's how they get children to trust them. Let me ask you, Maddie, because you said, this man turned a sport I love into my personal living hell. He started abusing you when you were how old? 14. Can you speak to that, the personal living hell? How so? Um, when I said personal living hell, Larry was a big part of it, but it wasn't the only part. Um, it was USA Gymnastics, Marta Caroli, my own coaches. Um, I had no voice. I was like a shell of a child. Um, and I thought there was no way out. And I thought, I, I really did think that the rest of my life I was just gonna be used and abused. Um, he made me almost give up hope. Is it true you, you injured yourself to avoid going in to see him? I mean, the girls would see him for injuries. He would ostensibly be fixing the injury and he would molest them, but you actually took to hurting yourself at home so that you wouldn't have to go see him. Yes, I tried to make it seem as if I was very hurt so I wouldn't have to go to the camp. I was leaving the next morning. My flight was at like six, so I had to get up around four to go to the airport and it was about 10 or 11 p.m. and I was taking a bath and I was just panicking and in my head, I was like, there's, there's zero chance I'm going tomorrow. I can't get myself to go. I, I can't do it again. What can I do to get myself out of going? And it happened so quickly. And I splashed some water on the floor, moved away the bath mat, sat down on the floor, and the, the tub rim was behind me. And I hit the back of my head as hard as I could to in, ensure that there would be a bump and to ensure that my parents could hear. So they thought that I slipped and fell. And they immediately took me to the hospital thinking I had a concussion. And in my head, that was a victory because I got to miss camp. You point out it's, it wasn't just Larry Nasser that you found abusive uh, in this sport. And I know, I mean, reading some of your story was shocking to me as an outsider. I, everybody knows that it's, it takes a lot to be a top U.S. gymnast. But the story about um, Marta Caroli, when you, you missed a day, you, you hurt yourself, and what did she say to you? After I had missed that camp, um, we had training camps almost every month. Um, so the next month I attended and she said to me, you know, one of my athletes fell out of the top bunks here and she didn't miss camp the next day. And that was, those were the only words she said to me the whole camp. So she shamed you for mm -hmm. not, for missing a day. And, and, and she said it with like a smile on her face. But this was part of it is your point that that sort of suck it up. Don't, don't be a whiner, don't complain, is part of the problem. Yeah, Larry wouldn't have been able to get away with what he did for so long if it, if it wasn't for the enablers around and the people who abused in multiple other ways. The enablers, it's a big part of our story. We're gonna pick it up with Kyle and the rest of our, our female panel uh, coming up. Hello today fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here.
to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.